about iterative um, geometry, which is the study of questions like how many curves or surfaces uh, are there satisfying certain given conditions. So it's a very old subject, more than 1,000 years old subject, and uh, typical questions. In Relative geometry is something like uh, how many lines in space are contained in a given smooth uh, cubic surface. It's, this is one of the first things that we learn in the basic algebraic geometry course. The number is 27. And uh, uh, the classical innovative geometry, such as Schubert calculus, uh, is mostly about intersection theory on smooth varieties like projective space, Grassmannians, and flat varieties, and so on. But uh, modern innovative geometry, uh, we have to deal with uh, arbitrarily singular moduli spaces. And for that matter, we have to use a virtual fundamental class, which I'm going to talk about later, to avoid, uh, to, to handle complicated issues like deformation invariance and so on. So uh, what, what distinguishes the modern innovative geometry from classical innovative geometry? I think it came, uh, it, uh, uh, it, modern innovative geometry began with the mirror symmetry. Uh, as Professor Yao showed us yesterday, in 1991, Candelas and his co-authors have conjectured the numbers of rational curves inside a Fermat quintic in P4 by mirror symmetry. It was, it was a great challenge for algebraic geometers, and we, uh, there was a tremendous effort for during the past three decades to verify the conjectures, prove the conjectures in mathematical rigorous terms. We, uh, so uh, this conjecture, now called mirror theorem, was proved by Gibentel and uh, Hong Lian and Ke Fung Liu and Professor Yao at around 1996. And also uh, the enumerative invariant from mirror symmetry turned out to be the gromov witten invariant and which actually enumerates stable maps uh, from conservative stable maps from genus G curves to the quintic Q. So the stability condition is that automorphism group should be finite and then we have to allow uh, nodal singularities for the curve to get a compact space. And the, the important technical issue is that we have to use uh, something called virtual fundamental class to get the correct numbers, which is deformation invariant. Okay, so uh, one key ingredient in the proof of mirror theorem is something called quantum left sheets. If you have a stable map, if you have a map from a curve C to Q, you can think of it as a map from the curve C to P4 because Q is inside P4. And it turns out that the moduli space of stable maps to Q is contained in the moduli space of stable maps to P4 as a zero locus of a section, which is given by Fermat Quintic, the defining equations of the Q of, of Q, uh, of a vector bundle lying over the moduli space of stable maps to P4. So in this case, the virtual fundamental class is, is easy. It's something classically, classically well known. So you think about the fundamental class of the moduli space of stable maps to P4, which is smooth. So the fundamental class is well-defined. And then you just take the Euler class of the vector bundle uh, of the section S. So that's the virtual fundamental class in this case. So the genus zero group of written invariant in this case, N0D is nothing but the integral of the Euler class of the vector bundle, pi lower star f alpha star O5, over, over the moduli space of stable maps to P4. And then after that, uh, you have to apply torus localization to finish the computation. Of course, the, the, the computation is not obvious, uh, but anyway, it was uh, done by uh, Professor Yao and Fong Lian and Ke Fong Liu. Now we, think about, we have to think about higher genus generalization. For higher genus chrome footing invariance, in 1993, uh, BCOB, the four string theorists, studied the B model side of the mirror symmetry, and then formulated some structural conjectures uh, like finite generation and holomorphic anomaly equations and so on. Uh, and these conjectures were finally recently proved by two teams, uh, uh, one team led by Jun Li and the other team by Yongbin Ruan. And I, 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 want, I want to explain uh, some uh, technical part of uh, the recent uh, advances in, in this direction. So the idea is the same in some sense. We want to push the computation to P4. The computation on Q is difficult. Moduli space 
it's very complicated. So, uh, uh, and the, the idea is that MG, the moduli space stable maps to Q is contained in the moduli space of stable maps to P4. And also, the moduli space of stable maps to Q is also the section, uh, zero locus of a section S of uh, not a vector bundle now, now is a sheaf now, now, which is pi lower star upper star O5. So the difference now is that we, we, S is not a section of a vector bundle. So we cannot take a Euler class of vector bundle to get the virtual fundamental class. Um, for genus one case, there are some ad hoc manners, ad hoc ways to handle this problem. And that was done uh, by Lee Zinger, Bakil Zinger. And recently it was handled, uh, there were other methods by QuasiMaps. Well, in, in general, uh, we need a generalized form of quantum left shift principle. In quantum left shift means that we, are, we want to push the computation on Q to P4. And uh, that can be uh, expressed in terms of shifted Lagrange multipliers method that I want to explain. I'm good to Next. So uh, I have to explain uh, quantum, uh, I have to explain shifted Lagrange multipliers. So I have to explain uh, classical Lagrange multipliers method first. And then I have to talk a little bit about the ideal algebraic geometry. And then I have to talk about shifted Lagrange multipliers. And then I'll talk about virtual fundamental class and get back to the generalized quantum left sheets. So uh, this is something we everybody teaches in a calculus course, uh, Lagrange multipliers method. So M and, M, M and N are manifolds, and S is a map between manifolds. So actually, we are interested in the zero locus of the map S. So S is the set of constraints. So um, and let's suppose N is a vector bundle over a manifold Z. And let's think about the dual bundle N star of the bund uh, bundle N. And we just take the fiber product of N and N star. And the coordinates of the fibers of the dual bundle are uh, something we call Lagrange multipliers. And there is natural pairing of N and N star. So we have a function from W uh, to A1. That's just the set of numbers. So, uh, so we have a diagram, uh, uh, which is here. So W is a fiber product of N and N star. And uh, X is a fiber product of M and W over N. And over X, we have a map, we have a function, which is the composition of the natural map from X to W, and the function from uh, defined on W, I call it phi. And so, so and, and we may have additionally, we may uh, have additional function defined on M. Uh, and then eventually what we are interested in in is the zero cost of this, uh, the, uh, the function S, which, is, which I denote by Y, and the function F restricted to Y. So that's the, this is what, uh, what we teach in a calculus course, right? <laughs> this is the, exactly what we do. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, under some non-degeneracy condition uh, we, that we know, that uh, we, tell, we, we know that the critical locus of the function f pulled back to x plus phi uh, is, uh, is, is, is uh, it's, it's, uh, more optimizes the function f restricted to y. In particular, when the function f is trivial, f is zero, then the critical locus of the function phi is exactly the zero locus of the section s, the map s, and that's just uh, something I denote by y. So, uh, so this is a diagram when f is equal to zero. So, so uh, what we want is the computation on y. We want to we want to know something about y, but instead of y, it's better to think of x, and uh, better to think of the critical locus of the function f as uh, function phi on x, and then uh, uh, so we can think of y as the critical locus of a function defined on x. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we want to generalize it to uh, the derived algebraic geometry setting. So the trouble is that, I mean, in the, in the, in the genus zero case, the quantum left shift works because we have a one vector bundle and one section. But now in general, for higher genus case, it's not a vector bundle, it's a complex of two, two locally free sheaves. Two vector, now we have two vector bundles and there, there's a homomorphism. And uh, 
In classical algebraic geometry, there is no way you can handle this situation. But in derived algebraic geometry, you can still think of the complex as a affine scheme over uh, the moduli space. So that's the idea. So we need to introduce a little bit about uh, a, a little. A, I, mean, I need to talk about a little about, bit about derived algebraic geometry. So uh, basic building blocks in classical algebraic geometry are uh, affine schemes, which are nothing but uh, commutative algebras. And in, in derived algebraic geometry, the basic building blocks are uh, commutative differential graded algebras. I mean, there are various different versions of different derived algebraic geometry, but this is the, the um, in some sense, simplest. So now we don't, we don't we 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 have a commutative algebra which has uh, which is graded negatively graded, and also we have differential of the uh, algebra, and all these structures are compatible. So these are the, the new building blocks for the derived algebraic geometry, and then we can glue these by categorical frameworks due to uh, gross ending. Okay. So here, let me let me give you an idea uh, uh, the, about the difference of classical algebraic geometry and derived algebraic geometry. So in the simplest case, where x is the zero cost of a section of a vector bundle, so v is a smooth scheme, f is a vector bundle, s is a section, and now x is a zero cost of s. In classically, we only remember the uh, regular functions on x, but in derived algebraic geometry, what you have to remember is the uh, the causal complex of the uh, section S. So if you know the derived algebraic, uh, uh, derived structure sheaf, if you just take the zeros cohomology, then you get back to the classical structure sheaf of X. So it means that in derived algebraic geometry, you have to remember more. You have to remember where your scheme came, uh, came from. Uh, like in the classical algebraic geometry uh, for a derived scheme or stack, we can think of the cotangent bundle as the target of a universal derivation. And the take by taking the dual, we get the tangent bundle of the derived scheme, derived stack. In particular, um, we can make sense of uh, K-shifted P-forms uh, uh, as, as an element of the case cohomology of the piece wedge power of the cotangent bundle. So, um, in, in particular, uh, a k-shifted two form gives us a map from the tangent bundle to the k-shifted cotangent bundle. If this isom if this map from the tangent bundle to the k-shifted cotangent bundle is an isomorphism, then we say the k-shifted two form is non-degenerate. If furthermore, if you can enhance the k-shifted two form to be a closed form, then we call a k-shifted symplectic structure. All right. So, uh, so what 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 what's what is the shifted Lagrange multipliers method? So, like before, we have uh, M and N, which are derived schemes or stacks now, and S is a morphism between them. And let's suppose now N is the spec of the symmetric algebra generated by the two-term complex of locally free sheaves P star and A star. Um, so B star is located at the uh, minus ones and A star is located at zero's position. So the symmetric algebra is a negatively graded uh, uh, commutative differential algebra. So uh, now we take the dual of this bundle N, but we have to, sh we have to take the uh, minus one shifted dual. Okay, so because the commutative differential graded algebra should be negative graded. So we take the dual, dual homomorphism, uh, the first homomorphism. So it's homomorphism from A to B. But take the symmetric algebra. So it, so A is now located at minus first place, and B is located at zero's place. Okay, in that way, it's it's, it's minus one shifted. So we can take the symmetric algebra. So it's there's a commutative differential graded algebra over Z, and take the spec. So this is another uh, affine scheme over Z. So like before, we just take the fiber product of these two, n and n star. And, uh, and, uh, we, and by, the, by the natural pairing of b and b star and a and a star, so b star is located at minus first place, and b is located at zero's place. Now we get a 
not a function, but a minus one shifted function because of the uh, shift, minus one shift. Okay, so we do the same. We play the same game as the Lagrange multipliers method. So W is a fiber product of N and N star. And we have a minus one shifted function from W. And X is the fiber product of M and W over N. Okay, so I can think about the critical locus of the, of the minus one shifted function phi. That's something I denote by X of S. And Y is the zero locus of the function S, which is the fiber product of M and Z over N by section S and section zero. Okay, so there are many interesting things going on in this diagram. Firstly, cotangent bond, minus one shifted cotangent bundle is symplectic, minus one shifted symplectic actually. And the zero locus of the differential phi, the critical locus of phi, is the Lagrangian intersection in the minus one shifted cotangent bundle. So it, it naturally, it has a natural minus two shifted symplectic structure. So you have to remember the X of S has a minus two shifted symplectic structure. And also, um, if the moduli space, if the, mod, if the space M is quadrismus, meaning that the cotangent bundle has, uh, is locally a two-term complex of locally free sheaves, uh, then X is also quadrismus, the cotangent bundle has, is locally a two-term complex vector bundles. And, uh, the differential of phi, the dual, take the, if, if I take the dual of d phi, then we have a homomorphism from the one shifted tangent bundle to the structure shift. Now, if I take the cohomology, then uh, the, the cohomology of the tangent bundle, one shifted tangent bundle is H1 of tangent bundle. That's something we call obstruction shift. So by taking H0 of d phi star, we get a cross-section of the obstruction sheaf of, uh, of X. Next slide, please. Okay, now I've explained uh, shifted Lagrange multipliers method. Then I should talk about virtual fundamental class. What, what can we do with, uh, with this uh, shifted Lagrange multipliers method? So uh, here's a quick introduction for virtual fundamental classes. So suppose X is quadrismus. Once again, it means that the tangent bundle is locally a two-term complex of locally free sheaves. The intrinsic normal cone of X is embedded into the vector bundle stack, and the virtual fundamental class is obtained by applying the Gissel map to the intrinsic normal cone of X. Now, um, uh, now, if furthermore we have a cosection of the obstruction sheaf, obstruction sheaf is once again H one of the tangent bundle, then the virtual fundamental class is localized to the zero locus of the cross section. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, now the correct way of, uh, in the algebraic geometry point of view, the correct way to think about cross section is to think of the dual. If you think of the dual of the cross section, it's a uh, uh, is the minus one shifted one form. Suppose, furthermore, that the minus one shifted one form is closed. This minus one shifted one form can be enhanced to a closed form. Then, as I mentioned, X of S is the Lagrangian intersection in the minus one shifted cotangent bundle, and it comes with the natural minus two shifted symplectic structure. Um, so, now, so, but now, now there is a now there is the, the new ingredient is that there is a recent theory of a virtual fundamental class for minus two shifted symplectic uh, schemes or stacks. So recent construction by Chong Sok Oh and Richard Thomas tells us that there is a way to assign the virtual fundamental class for minus two shifted symplectic uh, schemes or varieties. Uh, so we, the construction is not so difficult. So if you uh, first, you have to find a uh, three-term resolution, which is metric of the tangent bundle. With the middle term is a special orthogonal bundle. And the intrinsic normal cone is contained in the quotient stack of B by A as an isotropic subcone. And uh, 
uh, and then you, you apply the square root Euler class of the SO2N bundle and apply and cap it with the uh, fundamental class of the uh, isotropic cone, which is pulled back by the intrinsic normal cone. So how, how does this new construction uh, relate to the old construction of virtual fundamental class? Suppose you start with a quasi-smooth scheme or stack. You think about minus two shifted cotangent bundle. It comes with the natural minus two shifted symplectic structure. So because y is quasi-smooth, you can think about the ordinary virtual fundamental class. Because the cotangent minus two shifted cotangent bundle is minus two shifted symplectic, you can think about the automas class, and the two are the same. Okay, so let's let's get back, let's get back to uh, shifted Lagrange multiplier method. So remember, we start with the we started the map from M to N, and then we constructed the constructed X, which is a fiber product of N and M and W, and this X comes with a natural minus one shifted function. We take the differential, so we have a minus one shifted closed one form on X. Okay, so we have a minus one shifted close one form. So we can think about the uh, minus two shifted symplectic structure on the critical locus of phi, because d phi is uh, minus one shifted uh, close one form. It's zero locus as is a Lagrangian intersection. So it, com it comes with, with the minus two shifted symplectic structure. On the other hand, um, uh, so therefore by the Automa theory, we have a virtual cycle on uh, on the zero locus on the on the critical locus of uh, of phi. On the other hand, uh, as I mentioned, so uh, minus one shifted uh, one form. If we take the dual, it uh, gives us a cross section of the obstruction shift. Therefore, we have a cross section localized virtual fundamental class. And uh, recent work of myself with my former student, Han Jun, uh, tells us that these two virtual fundamental classes coincide. The cross-section localized virtual fundamental class is exactly the same as the Automas class coming from shifted symplectic geometry. Furthermore, if, um, if Y, the zero locus of the function S, was quadrismus for some reason, then then the uh, zero locus of the uh, the critical locus of the, the function phi is exactly the minus two shifted cotangent bundle of y, and uh, we have this equality: the virtual fundamental class of y is equal to the automas class of the minus two shifted cotangent bundle of y, and that's the same as the automas class of x of s. And by our theorem, this is the same as cross-section localized virtual fundamental class of X. So in general, we can prove a relative version. And the equality of the virtual cycle of Y with the cross-section localized virtual cycle of X was independently proved by uh, Thomas and Pizzioto by very different methods. Right, so let's get back to quantum Lefschetz. So now M is the moduli space of stable maps to P4, genus G. And uh, Y is the moduli space of stable maps to Q. And uh, the, uh, the, difference, the difference between the tangent bundle of M and Y is R pi star F star O5, which is, can be resolved by a uh, two-term complex of locally free sheaves, A and B. And uh, so, if you apply the shifted Lagrange multiplier method formalism to this setting, uh, the end result is the uh, Chang Li's uh, quantum Lefschetz formula, which tells us that virtual fundamental class of y, a Q is exactly up to sign, the same as the uh, cross section localized virtual fundamental class of the modular space of stable maps to P4 with P field. So uh, you, you can apply the same, the same uh, framework on the landau ginsburg side, and then you can check that the FJRW virtual cycle is the same as the uh, automatic virtual cycle uh, given by shifted symplectic geometry. So all this uh, played some roles in the recent proofs of PCOB conjecture and so on. 
and uh, some related topics. Okay, so I guess my time's up. So uh, thank you very much for your attention.